In this video, we'll be covering Chapter 19, Section 3, which deals with oxidizing and reducing agents. So first things first, we should probably define what an oxidizing and reducing agent is or are. Uh, so first things first, a reducing agent is a substance with the potential to cause another to be reduced. Basically, this is the uh, oxidized substance. So this is what gets oxidized, or what has the potential to be oxidized, rather. And this is what gains, or uh, rather, this is what loses the electrons and gains oxidation number. Oppositely, the oxidizing agent has the potential to cause another uh, to be reduced. Basically, it can cause reduction. So, this is what gains the electrons, because it takes away the electrons uh, from the other, causing oxidation. Gains electrons and reduces its oxidation number. So this is the reduced species in the reaction. Moving on now to the actual strengths of oxidizing and reducing agents. If you look at page uh, 643 in the textbook, there's this exact chart, which I'm sure is very hard to read unless you're full screen and cranked up the HD. Uh, but basically, it lists the relative strengths of reducing and oxidizing agents based on their placement in the activity series. Now, the activity series of metals and some nonmetals uh, is something we covered earlier on in a video. I'll link to it in the description. But uh, basically, it lists how readily a element or a compound will surrender an electron versus gain an electron. And what you should know is that elements towards the top of the activity series, for example, lithium, is a very strong reducing agent. So lithium is the strongest reducing agent because it readily uh, gives up its electron. Oppositely, fluorine, down here, is a very strong oxidizing agent because it will gladly take an electron, due to the fact that it's the most electronegative element, uh, from whatever it is oxidizing. And what's important to realize, looking at this chart over here, is that any reducing agent will be oxidized. So a reducing agent will be oxidized by something that's below it. Most obviously, uh, lithium over here would be oxidized very quickly by uh, fluorine, which is the most electronegative element. But it will also replace it in solution. So for example, we have uh, chlorine down here, Cl, uh, is lower than bromine, despite the fact that bromine is a relatively strong oxidizing agent. Uh, the chlorine because it's a stronger oxidizing agent, we'll replace it in solution. So if we have chlorine in some form plus your bromine ion in aqueous solution, what will happen is that the chlorine will dissolve into the solution and you'll end up with uh, diatomic bromine coming out. So this is useful if you have a solution of something, you can uh, essentially take it out of solution by throwing in a stronger oxidizing agent. Now in the instance of this reaction in which chlorine replaces bromine in solution, we can look at the two half reactions and say that bromine is the reducing agent. In other words, it what, it's what gets oxidized because you have your two negative bromine molecules, or ions rather, and you end up with 
positive or neutral uh, diatomic bromine and to balance the charge it must therefore surrender to electrons. Similarly we can say that chlorine is the oxidizing agent that is it causes the bromine to be oxidized by taking away its two electrons. So you have the chlorine plus the two electrons yield two chlorine ions. Now the last idea we're going to be discussing in this video is what's known as disproportionation. And this is basically when a substance acts as both an oxidizing agent, in other words it causes something to be oxidized, and a reducing agent. So the same substance both causes reduction as well as oxidation. And the easiest uh, compound to look at for disproportionation, or at least one of the most common, is peroxide, which is an ion of two oxygen molecules linked together with the Lewis dot structure as shown above. So if we look at the de decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, so H2O2, into water and oxygen, we can see that, first things first, uh, this peroxide, because there's each hydrogen has a charge of plus one, then the peroxide together has a charge of negative two, or each individual oxygen molecule has a charge of negative one, or a, a oxidation number, rather. However, when you look over here, because you form elemental oxygen, one oxygen uh, reduces, or two oxygens reduce to form, or oxidize rather, to form a neutral oxygen molecule with a oxidation number of zero. However, because both of these hydrogens in the water molecule have a charge of plus one, this oxygen, to balance out and keep everything neutral, must have an oxidation number of minus two. So one oxygen goes from minus one to minus two on its oxidation number, and another goes from minus one to zero. So you can see that you have one, or two in this case, due to the coefficients, uh, oxygen molecules that are reduced, and another two that are oxidized. So these two uh, act as a oxidizing agent for these oxygen molecules down here that form the diatomic molecule of oxygen. Likewise, these diatomic molecules of oxygen act as a reducing agent for those that form water. And this somewhat confusing process uh, in which both reduction and oxidation occur from the same compound is what is known as disproportionation.